JM on Cars is kindly sponsored by Car Vertical, the only car history checking service you'll need, which references more than 20 databases globally to make sure you don't buy a car with a hidden past. For a special discount on the service, please use the link in the description down below. And now, today's feature presentation. Hello everybody. Today I am driving two cars which I think could not really be any more different if they tried. And we're beginning with this, a 2010 Mercedes GL 450. I have many times said that in reality there is absolutely no need to spend any more than about £20,000 on a car. And today we're putting that theory to the test because on the face of it this Merc really gives you just about everything I think you could conceivably need. So let's break it down. This is a large SUV and everybody thinks that they need one of those but because it is a large SUV it does actually bring some benefits. You can park it pretty much anywhere which is exactly what I did to get my static shots for this car. You also have space for five people and a lot of luggage or seven people and a little bit of luggage. It's got what many people would deem a premium badge on it and to please the petrol head in us you've got up front a four litre turbocharged V8 diesel putting out only about 300 horsepower but a much more impressive 550-ish pound-feet of torque. It's about 700 newton meters. Because it is a, a bit of a heifer though, it's not exactly quick, seven and a half seconds naught to 60 time is, is brisk I suppose for a big bus, but not exactly going to set your hair on fire. It also has air ride which you can adjust, it's got comfort mode, it's got sporty mode, you can raise it, you can lower it, it's got Harman Kardon stereo in it, it's got sat nav, albeit massively outdated, it's got Bluetooth, it's got million way adjustment seats that are heated and cooled in the front, heated in the middle, it's also got two sunroofs, one here up front where you'd expect it and the other, bizarrely, all the way at the back so your lovely luggage can be nice and sunny or Aunt Beryl can at least moan about how hot it is these days. I checked on Auto Trader, and there were four of these GL450s for sale and each of them was up for about 15,000 quid meaning that within this hypothetical 20 grand budget you've even got a little bit of cash to fix anything that goes wrong and it being an old and expensive Mercedes things can and I have been told by the owner will go wrong. Luckily though, these aren't quite as ruinous as say running an old Porsche KN. That has also been confirmed for me by the previous owner. Things that like to go in these cars include the air suspension, but that also I found with my own S-Class does not really ever need to be as expensive as people make out. This generation GL was the first of its kind, and over time it morphed into what we now call the GL S-Class. That nomenclature means that as far as Mercedes are concerned, it's just a 4x4 equivalent to the S. And the S, of course, is a top-of-the-line flagship luxury car. This is not particularly luxurious. Yes, okay, it's big and soft and wafty and has a Merc badge on it, but from where I'm sitting right now, it doesn't actually feel any more upmarket really than my buddy's Vito van. Okay, the, the leather's nice and, and he doesn't have cooled seats, but yeah, quality materials in here, not so good. In fact, they've done some really odd stuff. Like this is all weird plasticky vinyl stuff. The dash, I'm pretty sure is not real leather. Seats, like I said, are, are, are lovely. But then they put this little bit of chrome on the end of the gear lever stalk here. Very strange indeed. The wheel itself, buttons and everything in here, they do feel sort of, you know, 10 year old Merc, but that I guess isn't really a surprise. So from an interior fit, finish and toys perspective, this car doesn't really do anything to distinguish itself from the many other cars you could buy in this category at this kind of price point. I suppose you could get yourself that early KN, um, but it is really a bit of a crapshoot as to whether you're gonna get a good one or not. And I would say the odds are saying that, that you won't. You could also go and buy a Range Rover, and for £20,000 you get a lot of Range Rover. I'm not quite sure you'll just about get into the current generation. For thirty grand, you definitely will, but twenty grand, eh, if you could, it probably wouldn't be a very good example. But you could get a previous Gen 1, and those, again, probably going to be stress and hassle. In fact, let's just be honest here, any big old luxury car, SUV or otherwise, is going to cost a lot of time if not too much money to maintain.
Wow. Yeah, I mean, why slow down, right? Who cares? Yeah, okay. It's a big car, this. I mean, really, really big. Slab-sided, though, which means it doesn't look that great, but it is practical. You can get a lot in that boot, especially with the seats down. Storage space with the rear seats in play is quite disappointing, actually. I've got to be honest. If you look in the boot, where the little uh, luggage cover is, that is where the rear seats would go to. So, yeah, you're not left with a lot of space. So, then, what's this car like if you put your boot in? Now... I have already done a little bit of driving, and I can tell you, if you're in comfort mode, mildly terrifying. So I'm going to put it in sport mode, which, I'll be honest, doesn't really improve things <laughs> that much. I'm even going to use the paddles, because, you know, why not? And actually, I use the paddles, and, and I, yeah, okay, so what it's doing, it's doing the normal Merc thing. So all the paddles are doing is telling it what gear it could go into. I'm not actually... Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I don't know, am I making it change gear? I don't even know. This is a bit weird. It's got some pace for sure. Yeah, <laughs> it's gear shift is horrible. It, I'm just pressing buttons and I don't feel like I'm influencing any of the decision making process whatsoever. Now, even in sport mode, this is supremely comfortable, but it does come at the cost of a little bit. All right. It does come at the cost of quite a bit of body roll. This thing is very floaty, even by S Class standards. And, and it feels a little bit out of control. Also feels massively out of place on a road like this. Oh, second squeaky bum moment. But I'm coming somewhere I don't normally film, and this is the best road that I have managed to find in the area. Okay, this is much better suited to car number two, but you'll see that one next, and, and hopefully then you'll see why I've scouted this road out, because it should be perfect. old-fashioned gearbox takes its time to get working it's not the old five-speed is it no it can't be yeah it's a six or a seven probably a seven Mercedes didn't really ever do six-speed gearboxes I keep going to change gear and I'm just wasting my own time here <laughs> oh dear Stereo is quite decent. I do like that. All oh, the, the infotainment system here is all, oh, yeah, very old work. It's, it, it works well enough. You know, it's okay. It's not, not spectacular. Visibility, actually, really good. Yeah, really, really good. Because you've got so much glass in the side of this thing. Excellent for mounting cameras. And also, yeah, you can see out the damn thing. That's really nice. I like that. Very handy. Bonnet, though. You just really can't see these. There's a little sort of, actually a pair of humps in it. I don't know precisely what they're for or who they're trying to impress, but um, you just got this tiniest little glimpse of it and, and that's about it really. Doesn't make a lot of noise either. I have put an exhaust cam on. I'm not sure you're gonna get much. It sounds nice enough from in here. I mean, it doesn't sound like a diesel, but with a four and a bit thousand RPM red line, you're not fooling anyone, it's anything but. It's got enough pace, it's okay. Really, this is born as a motorway cruiser. And indeed, this is the reason that its owner, Stefan, wound up with one, because years ago, he bought a GL420 as a car explicitly to go down to the south of France with the family in. And it was absolutely perfect for that. And I can see, yeah, if you've got a family in particular, you need space, you know, you need some toys, you need some comfort. Great car for that, really is. As a primary car, I think this pretty much fails on the whole luxury front. I just don't feel like I'm in something that special. You spend 15 grand on an S-Class and you are gonna get something quite majestic. So it is a little bit of a mixed bag, the Merc. I would say though, if you are in a sort of fortunate position to be able to afford such a thing, as a kind of second car, general runabout dog's body, if you need something this size and with this kind of capability, not a bad shout, I would think. I, I could kind of get on board with something like this. It also is kind of rare. I don't see these about that often. And in all fairness, I said yes to this review because I just completely forgotten the GL even existed. I don't do enough Mercs on the channel as it is, I think. I always want to try and feature some more, but I just... I just don't feature them, and because I don't feature them, people don't email me with their interesting mercs. Aircon's nice and cold. Three zone at least as well, you get two up front, one in the back. 
cool to see. It works quite well, although it's yeah, it's 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 not brilliant. I know where there's uh, it's air conditioned. I think you can get air conditioned and you can get ventilated seats, and they're quite different things. This is the kind of road that this car's much more suited to, and you can really tell. Yeah, for road use, I think sport mode is almost a necessity. It doesn't exactly work miracles, but it does just give you that little bit more sense of control over this fairly wobbly old body. Other things I would have expected this car to have, which it doesn't, include reversing camera, not got one of those, soft closed doors, doesn't have those, double glazing, doesn't have that, does have cruise control, does have a speed limiter, that's nice enough, but yeah. Upmarket, this does not feel. Shame, really. I suppose now, this means I have to go and try the next generation, don't I? Oh well, I kind of like this car. It's a bit, it's a bit rubbishy, but in a good way. Does that make sense? I don't know if it does. As you can probably tell, this is me firmly outside my comfort zone, but I enjoy that on occasion. Thanks all for watching. Please like, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you for the next one. And I promise you, if you didn't like this car, you may love the next one. Oh, an Alfa Brera. <laughs> I don't see those much anymore. See ya!